Fans love to spot hidden Easter eggs and cameos in their favorite films. Some are more obvious than others, and eagle-eyed fans wear it like a badge of honor when they discover a partially well-hidden gem. But some Easter eggs aren't really in there for the fans. No, some of them are put there by the actors or function as an inside joke for the cast and crew. And those are the hidden moments we'll be looking at today. But first, we'll give you a quick moment to hit that subscribe button and join the notification squad so you never miss an upload. Oh yeah. And as always, let's take a quick peek at today's emoji trivia. Can you guess the name of the movie based on these emojis? The answer will be revealed at the end of this video. Star Wars The Force Awakens The first entry to the Star Wars sequel trilogy was perhaps the most anticipated film in the last few decades. And Star Wars fans have a lot to be excited for, with the next installment, The Last Jedi, scheduled to hit theaters this December. Episode 7 had been years in the making, with a lot of Hollywood hotshots getting the chance to make their mark on the film at various stages in development. One such example has to do with BB-8 and the development of the lovable droid's voice. <laughs> If you look closely at the film's credits, SNL's Bill Hader and Parks and Rec actor Ben Schwartz are credited as BB-8 voice consultants. And it's totally true! For most of us in the audience, we just figured BB-8's computerized bleeps and bloops were done by the sound team. But it turns out director J.J. Abrams had asked the two comedians to help him with the character because he wanted to make sure the droid had a humanity to it. Even though you don't hear Schwartz or Hader in the final film, they recorded actual dialogue for the droid that was relayed through a vocoder. Every time BB-8 responds to one of the other characters, there are actual lines. The sound team used all of Schwartz and Hader's dialogue during editing on the film in order to have a reference point for the final computerized sounds. The two must have a very different experience watching the film since they know exactly what BB-8 is trying to say. No! Deep breath. No. The Nice Guys 2016's The Nice Guys stars Russell Crowe as an unethical enforcer who teams up with a private detective played by Ryan Gosling in order to investigate the disappearance of a teenage girl. While the film received plenty of critical praise, it mostly flew under the radar, so you may not have caught this one in theaters. Gosling's character, Holland March, breaks his arm early in the film and is forced to wear a plain white cast. There's a visible doodle on the cast that serves as a surprisingly straightforward Easter egg related to the actor himself. How stupid do you think I am? The doodle was drawn by Australian actor Angeri Rice, who plays March's daughter Holly in the film. She was given free reign by the crew to draw whatever she wanted on the cast, so she drew a crying duck, or more specifically, a gosling. When Mr. Gosling asked the child star what the drawing was supposed to be, she responded, It's you! That's right, heartthrob Ryan Gosling is wearing a gosling right on his right arm throughout the film. You know, I think there's a certain poetry to that. The Flash The Flash is an ongoing series on the CW that spun off from the popular show Arrow and takes place in the same DC Comics universe. The show is a contemporary reboot of the popular DC character. It follows a young Barry Allen, played by former Glee actor Grant Gustin, as a crime scene investigator with superhuman speed. The show has been a big critical success, with Rolling Stone placing The Flash on its 2016 list of 40 best science fiction TV shows of all time. Now, The Flash features a bunch of hidden Easter eggs. We could spend a whole video just talking about this one show, but perhaps the best hidden gem is the one that the actors themselves had been perpetuating since the first season. In an interview with TV Insider, Gustin revealed that he and his castmates have been hiding rubber ducks around the set trying to get the yellow squeak toy as much screen time as possible. Eagle-eyed fans should keep their eyes peeled over the next month, as The Flash will be airing its third season finale on May 23rd. It remains to be seen if the famous rubber duck will be making a cameo. <laughs> Captain America Civil War the final installment in the Captain America trilogy was released in 2016 to critical and commercial acclaim. The film saw the superhero squad split into two opposing factions, with Captain America and Tony Stark vying for control of the Avengers. Civil War was another huge hit for Marvel Studios, raking in over a billion dollars at the box office to become the highest grossing film of 2016. 
The MCU is no stranger to hidden Easter eggs, but Civil War features a couple that are just for the cast and crew. In the big airport fight scene, the Bluth family stair car from Arrested Development can be seen parked in the background. Why the Bluth car, you may be asking? Well, before working on the latest Captain America sequels, directors Anthony and Joe Russo directed a majority of episodes of Arrested Development, so it makes sense that they would want to call back to their Emmy Award-winning roots. But there's another inside joke in the film that takes a friendly shot at actor Robert Downey Jr. When Tony Stark visits the raft, Clint Barton mocks him by calling him the Futurist. The Futurist, gentlemen! The Futurist is here! While it makes sense in the context of the film, RDJ would be painfully aware that the Futurist also refers to the actor's one and only music album, which was released in 2014. Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me If You Can is Spielberg's popular 2002 film based on the life of con artist Frank Abagnale Jr. The film stars Leonardo DiCaprio as the young man who impersonated a lawyer, a doctor, and even a Pan Am pilot. You're late, all right? My name's Alan, Barry Allen, United States Secret Service. Your boy just tried to jump out the window. Abagnale's story is so compelling that it not only spawned a big budget film, but a successful Broadway musical as well. One fun Easter egg from the movie that you may have missed is when Frank Abagnale himself makes a cameo. You probably wouldn't recognize him. To be fair, he's made millions of dollars in his life impersonating other people. But maybe that's why he was so good at blending in as an arresting officer in the scene in which DiCaprio's Frank is hauled off to jail in a small town in France. There's something oddly poetic about the real Abagnale arresting the fake Abagnale in a movie. Frank was understandably thrilled to have DiCaprio portray him on the big screen, saying it's quite flattering to have Leonardo DiCaprio play you in a movie. He's a great looking young man. Well now I wonder why Frank didn't ask for a walk-on cameo for the musical as well. Beauty and the Beast 2017's live-action remake of the Disney classic Beauty and the Beast stars Emma Watson and Dan Stevens alongside a powerhouse cast featuring the likes of Stanley Tucci, Audrey McDonald, Emma Thompson, and even Ian McKellen. While everyone has their own opinion whenever it comes to any live-action remake, there's no denying that Beauty and the Beast is a huge box office success. But this musical movie also has a number of hidden Easter eggs, some of which are hidden right in the score. This particular example comes from the memorable Be Our Guest, which features a few musical Easter eggs that reference the actors singing the song, Ewan McGregor. You may remember McGregor's earlier venture into on-screen musicals with 2001's Moulin Rouge. Well, Beauty and the Beast decided to pay homage to McGregor's jazzy past with a set piece and musical interlude in the song's finale that calls back to that film. And that's not the only reference in the song. When McGregor invites guests to a culinary cabaret, the opening number from the musical cabaret can be heard in the score, and later, the title theme from the legendary Singin' in the Rain also plays in the song's score. It looks like the film really wanted to pay respect to the titans of movie musicals that came before it, but filmmakers couldn't help but include a little reference to Moulin Rouge that was just for the actor. The Incredible Hulk the Hulk has had a bit of a muddled career on the big screen. The 2003 film, simply titled Hulk, received mixed reviews. While that film tried to dive a little more thoughtfully into the psyche of the character, it ultimately missed out on a lot of the action elements that are essential to any good superhero film. 2008's The Incredible Hulk was Marvel's attempt at a reboot for the character, and it was actually only the second film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This film features a brief cameo from a very important character in the Hulk's history. Fans may not recognize this actor's face, but they should recognize his voice. That's because Paul Souls, who cameos as Stanley the Pizza Shop owner, was the voice of Bruce Banner in the 1966 Hulk animated series. They say he's one of the best. Here's another fun fact. Mark Ruffalo was also up for the role of Bruce in The Incredible Hulk before filmmakers decided on Edward Norton. Ruffalo would end up replacing Norton in the role for future Hulk appearances in the MCU. Ratatouille 2007's Ratatouille was another critical and commercial success for the powerhouse team at Disney Pixar. Set in the cuisine capital of the world, Paris, Ratatouille follows the story of a rat named Remy who befriends a young garbage boy at an upscale Parisian restaurant. With Remy's passion for cuisine and Linguini's opposable thumbs, the two make a huge splash in the world of food with their unique and delicious creations. 
In order to create the film's fictionalized version of Paris, 372 fake labels and logos were created by the animation team. This included food labels, posters, and businesses. This can't just happen! The whole thing is a setup! This was a perfect opportunity for animators to hide references to the cast and crew right in plain sight. Here are just a few of the many examples. Chateau Bird Champagne is named after the film's director, Brad Bird. In a scene in Linguini's apartment, he's cooking with Buchiba brand spaghetti, a nod to animator Bolham Buchiba. And that motorcycle that makes Colette look oh so cool? It's a Callahan, which is named after the director of photography, Sharon Callahan. These mock products serve as a fitting tribute to the crew that worked so hard on the film. It's also a very intricate inside joke for everyone involved. The Force Awakens, again. That's right, The Force Awakens is full of so many awesome Easter eggs that we couldn't help but include another one on this list. So J.J. Abrams needed something fitting for the cantina scene in episode seven. In order to get the scene just right, he enlisted the help of Broadway composer Lin-Manuel Miranda, the man behind the mega-hit musical Hamilton, to write the music. The result is a full-fledged intergalactic hit, Jabba Flow, a reggae-reminiscent tune written entirely in Huttese. In a live performance of the song, Miranda remarked, I went to a website that had all the Huttese glossary of terms and it translates as, no lover lover, it wasn't me. It's literally a shaggy intergalactic remix. Well, that's already some legendary behind-the-scenes knowledge. But what makes the whole thing even better is that J.J. Abrams himself performs backup vocals on the track. Together, the two men form the fictional band Shag Kava. Now, it's not them playing the instruments in the actual scene, but nonetheless, you're hearing the director himself in the background during this crucial moment. And we're sure the entire cast and crew got a real kick out of hearing it for the first time. Guardians of the Galaxy 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy stars the hilarious Chris Pratt as Peter Quill, the wisecracking leader of a misfit team of extraterrestrial criminals. The film was an instant success, no doubt due to its skillful blend of humor and action. Oh, yeah. It is a Marvel movie, so of course there are going to be some killer Easter eggs. But this one actually came to light outside the MCU. On Twitter, director and writer James Gunn revealed the origins behind a crucial piece of information in the movie. According to Gunn, Peter Quill named his ship the Milano, after his childhood crush, actor Alyssa Milano. While it may be just a funny little Easter egg to audiences, this is a pretty important piece of character information for Chris Pratt. I mean, he named his ship after her. She must hold a pretty special place in his heart. It's all about the details, guys. The highly anticipated sequel, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, is already tearing it up at the box office and is undoubtedly another huge hit for Marvel and Disney. We know it just came out, but we're already excited for Volume 3, which may be hitting theaters as early as 2020. Well, that's a wrap on today's list. Did you catch any of these inside Easter eggs the first time around? Which one was your favorite? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Screen Rant so you never miss an upload. And of course, before we go, here's the answer to our emoji trivia question. Have a good one.